It's derby season. We're gonna make the mint julep. The word julep originally meant medicine. It was a medicinal thing. Whether or not it was actually medicinal is up to whether or not you think uh, bloodletting and leeches is actually medicinal. Probably, because it's a very old term. It comes from like 600 AD. At some point, it became an excuse, like as a joke in a tongue-in-cheek way, that your julep, a julep was medicinal, but it was actually just alcohol. It was similar to folks who would wake up and say, did you have your bitters this morning? Which was really, did you have a cocktail this morning? Because you have to have a cocktail in the morning. David Wondrich compared it to waking up and having a bong rip. Uh, so this is not medicinal. This is just for inebriation purposes. Mint julep has a long history. Most popularly, it was made with, with brandy, actually, or a cognac. I'm not a purist. I'm just not. Uh, the mint julep is now commonly made with bourbon. I'm gonna make mine with bourbon. At some point, I'll probably do a history of the mint julep episode, similar to the old-fashioned one, but this is not that episode. So I will talk about that, and I might make some nods in that direction and test some things. Uh, one thing I will do that's a little non-standard is I like a little bit bitters in mine. So we're gonna use a little bit of Angostura bitters in a mint julep. Um, that's totally optional. I just happen to like it that way. And really, this is that kind of a drink. It should be made the way that you like. So let's get going. We're gonna need a quarter ounce of our Demerara simple syrup. And really, that's light. You could go a little more. So I think I'm gonna actually split the difference. I'm gonna go between a quarter and a half an ounce here. Um, I have a bit of a sweet tooth, to be frank, and I like my mint julep to be a little bit more on the sweet side of the spectrum. If you don't, that's fine. Do I muddle my mint? I do. Um, I like my mint muddled. Now, I understand that for some reason, some people get very up in arms about that. Um, there is a whole tradition that says you should take a bouquet of mint, hold it in your hand. I've now, I've goofed, I've put syrup in this so I can't demonstrate, unfortunately. Uh, hold it in your hand, turn the glass upside down, put it over the top and just kind of rub it around inside and that that should be enough. I don't know, I like my mint a little bit mintier. I would say 10 leaves would be enough, but these are particularly small leaves, so we're gonna go with a little bit more than 10. Eight, nine, 10. Let's go 15, 16 maybe. I'll go two more. I like my mint julep minty. This is a muddler, I'm gonna muddle it. When you muddle, you don't wanna destroy the thing you're muddling, you just wanna press it. You're just trying to get it to express some of its essence. I like my mint juleps to be on the boozy side, I feel like it should be. So we're gonna go with three ounces of bourbon. Two ounces, of, and another one makes three. The next part of the big mystery, the big question, is do I use crushed ice, do I use shaved ice, or do I use cracked ice? I think cracked would be pretty traditional, and so would be shaved, but I'm actually gonna crush my ice. Before I add the crushed ice, I'm gonna throw in my two dashes of Angostura bitters. What I wanna do now is I wanna put enough ice in here to go, you know, about to here in this drink. I don't wanna go all the way yet. And there's another thing. A lot of people take this frost on the outside of the drink very seriously with a mint julep. If you want that, do not touch the glass. Be very careful, either wear gloves, as some folks do, or only touch the rim because the oils on your hands will prevent frost from forming. At this point, I wanna swizzle this a little bit. Now, you could do that with a bar spoon. You could do that with the spoon you're gonna drink it with. I, I mean, I happen to have an actual swizzle stick and this is a lot like a swizzle, so I'm just gonna swizzle. Just kind of working all these ingredients together. Okay. Already that frost is starting to form on the drink. So now I wanna add the rest of my ice. And what we're going for here is kind of a lot of ice. We want like a big kind of dome of ice. Now we need the mint. I've selected my mint, I've got a lot of mint here. This drink does call for a full on bouquet of mint, and so it's important to use a lot of mint. I'm gonna take all my mint, and I'm just gonna, um, somewhat gently, you get a feel for this, give it a clap. Maybe two, just to awaken the cells and jostle that mint oil loose from them. And because I've already kind of packed this ice, I'm gonna create an opening here for my mint. 
and I'm going to insert that into my drink. That looks very nice. And now the straw should go near the mint so that the drinker has to put their face near the mint. Did a pretty good job here. We got a pretty decent, healthy uh, thing of frost here. It's kind of frozen to the table. Um, let's see how it is. Ooh, that is really something. You get such mint nose taste. It's right up in your face and it's very dominant. You get that first. You get the smell of mint. It's in there and that's the whole idea, right? You want to put that, you know, put your face right in there when you take that sip. But then it immediately is overtaken as soon as that bourbon hits your lips by the bourbon by those I don't know, boiled peanuts. And um, the spiciness actually comes out forward here. And it brings, I'm getting what I think is peanut, but I could be wrong. Maybe some caramel. It's a great, great, great mint julep. What's funny about a, a drink on crushed ice, a lot of people think that, oh, it's got a very short glass life. That it's melting rapidly and you need to drink it. That's actually not the truth. Because with the crushed ice, that surface area, the, the liquid actually cools well below the freezing which, uh, and, and stays there for quite a while, which means that the ice can no longer melt. Uh, it has to do with the surface area of ice to the volume of liquid. It's complicated stuff. I'm not really that smart about that stuff. And that's why on a crushed ice drink, you'll get that frost on the outside. My tie will do the same thing. So it is a sip and drink. You can enjoy this for quite a while. There is a tradition that says that a splash of Jamaican rum on the top of this would not be out of character. I've never tried that, but I'm going to try it today. I like this drink as it is. I don't think that this is going to have much of an effect. And when I say a splash, I mean like a quarter ounce, you know, a splash. So we'll just add that right up to that hop there. See how that changes this drink. Hmm. That's interesting. I wasn't expecting what I got. That's a lot different than I... I like that. I like rum, so that could be a factor. There's something about the, the, the fruit notes, the banana, because that particular rum has got a lot of banana funk. With the mint, it really works. I don't know, that actually, I like that a lot. It's a great showcase for the bourbon. The bourbon is very dominant in this drink. It is not, um, it is a, a spirit forward drink. There's no question. And it is getting better. Yeah, a little time in the, a little time in the beaker does help this. So I've read that traditionally a mint julep needs to be sat for about five minutes before anybody serves it and, and you know, hands it to somebody. I think it needs a little bit of melt time, a little bit of dilution. Um, it is a powerful drink made this way. It is a strong drink. It is something that will knock you straight onto your ass. Um, probably necessary after your chosen horse does not make it first past the finish line at the, uh, at the, uh, the Derby, the Kentucky Derby. What would I name my horse? Black Betty. I would name my horse Black Betty. We'd black, I would name it Black Betty. Whoa, Black Betty, blam to blam. Whoa, Black Betty, blam to blam. Damn thing got a child, blam to blam. Child gone wild, blam to blam. Run around around, blam to blam. Run around, blam to blam. Whoa, Black Betty, blam to blam. Whoa, Black Betty, blam to blam. That's what I named my horse. I'm on the floor with a mint julep.